Welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I am Connor Williams, and if you're watching this, we have just signed Donny van der Beek uh, on loan from Manchester United. Um, yeah, as this video goes out, it should be announced that Donny van der Beek has joined us. Uh, I'll give you guys my thoughts and opinions on that. Obviously, me and Cal Brannan spoke the other day on the live stream about him. A couple of people gave their inputs, including that it is van der Beek, not van der Beek. Um, which is why I'm trying my best not to fall into old habits and call him Beak. Um, yeah, I, I, I like this. I think if it was a Rafa Benitez signing him, I would be really staunch against it. But I think with the way I've room, I've read that Frank Lampard likes to play his football. I think there's a place for Donny Van der Beek at Everton. It's a little bit tough to judge him off his English career because his United career has been so, so tough. People have, you know, were feeling sorry for him. It's been a really tough time for him in England so far. So it's a bit hard to judge him on that. So I'm trying to flash it back to his Ajax days, which is what United brought him off, um, and sort of this type of player he was then. Interestingly, a lot of people have said he can play as a number 10 and did for Ajax. Obviously, we were after a number 10 last season, uh, last under the last manager. I don't know if we're going to play with a number 10. Frank Lampard likes a 4-3-3 with overlapping fullbacks. Uh, it's a shame Luca Dean's gone. Um, but yeah, um, and I could see Patterson getting that role at right back. But onto, back onto Van der Beek. Um, I think he will probably play in that centre mid role that Frank Lampard similarly played under Mourinho where he powers forward, gets into the box late, has either passes to the assister or will go for goal himself. Maybe he'll get a couple of assists. I don't think he's the focal creative point he's not like when we had James Rodriguez and he just was the focal creative point I think he's the one who moves things along with quick passing again apparently he's an alright ball carrier according to the likes of who scored website um, and sofa score um, I actually quite liked him in Ajax I think he played with a lot of a lot of fight and determination uh, that Ajax squad the one where it had like him the lit um, and a couple of others, uh, De Jong, before De Jong went to Barcelona, they were that was a good side uh, and Van der Beek was very, very important in all of that as well, he played as pivotal of a role. Um, I think he, I think he's definitely got a place. I think that it's wise that we're getting him on loan. Um, obviously, buying him if you go off his Premier League experience, I don't think he's worth the gamble to buy. There might be an option to buy in the loan deal. I've not heard anything as of yet. Um, but just a loan deal is sensible. You don't want to start throwing money at him and, and he struggles and continues on the form he is at United. Because again, it could be the fact that he's just not got enough chances at United. Or it could be that he's just not made for English football. It wouldn't be the first time we've signed a Dutch player that was very, very good on the eye. That didn't quite you know, transition into English football. I'm thinking of Davy Klaas in here. A very, very good footballer, but wasn't meant to be. I hope that's not the case with Donny van der Beek. I, I, I'm, I, he's a different type of player. He's a lot more dynamic in the fact he moves a little bit more than uh, David Klassen did. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But, you know, just, just that whole lumping him in with the same sort of person, same sort of signing, I don't want to do either. Um, I will get some of Donny van der Beek's sort of stats up for you from SofaScore. They're very, very good. Uh, they've got his attributes here and they, they admit that he is creative more than he is anything else um, and he has been creative for quite a while during his Ajax days he was like 70 out of 100 in creativeness his tactical side is a little bit worrying but if you're going to play in a 4-3-3 you have those two other centre mids that will always be able to cover um, I think we have missed, we've been missing this type of player a creative spark like I said I don't think he's your sole playmaker that will create everything but I think he has the ability to take it to that next step uh, and he's certainly more creative than the players we've got in our squad currently when you think we've got Alan Decore is more of your box to box uh, midfielder Alan I would say Alan is potentially more of a ball carrier as well but we're yet to see that really from Alan because he normally plays in that six role but there are other there are other roles that he can play if he plays that ball carrier or if Frank Lampard has decided he's going to play a 4-2-3-1 that could even work as a 4-2-3-1 that would be a really interesting role for him to play um, but we're going to have to wait and see really aren't we what Frank Lampard does. Um, Anyway, moving on from that, um, there are a couple. Um, there are a couple of stats um, that we've got here as well. Obviously, from his Ajax days, that I can get up now. Um, we'll go back to his Ajax days in the Eredivisie. 
um, which is very, very good. He played 23 games in his last season. This was on the Eredivisie, 83 minutes a game. So he got plenty of game time, eight goals, um, three goals, 0.3 goals per game. Uh, he shot 1.9 a game. Uh, he missed five big chances, but again, I don't. He's not someone I associate with goal scoring. Assists, he got five. Big chances created with six. Uh, key passes per game were 1.8. Um, his his accuracy per game was 82%, um, which I think I think highlights the type of player I've just said he is. Interceptions per game is 0.7. Tackles per game were two, so he can tackle. Um, Possession one in the final third, 0 0.9. He's very good in a pressing system. So what that basically summarises it to is that he's not your goal-scoring midfielder as such, and he's not your assister as such. He is somebody who will move the ball along quickly, pass it to the next person, get the ball rolling. Um, the tackle suggest he has got a tackle in him. He does press a little bit higher up the field as well, which is what I think Frank Lampard will be looking for midfielders that can push a little bit further up. Maybe like a Mazzala type role, just push that little bit further up in the field. Um, I actually do really like the sounds of him in a Frank Lampard system. Obviously, we are rumoured to be getting a couple more midfielders in, and depending on who we get in on deadline day, that drastically could change uh, the role played. I think he will probably play the role we saw of Harry Wilson if Anthony Gordon doesn't. That sort of role where you're allowed that, that little bit more freedom moving forward. Um, but yeah, I think it's really great to see uh, that he's coming here. He was linked in the summer as well when Marcel Brands was at the club, which is another uh, thing people have been pointing out. Um, Marcel Brands was a big fan of him. Obviously, we all thought that might be because he's Dutch and that sort of association but it looks like Lampard is also a fan of him or the club if not the club have highlighted him and he's one of the targets Lampard's green lighted before he got the job um, it's interesting that the club is still looking at Marcel Brands's targets that to me would highlight that the club don't really know who to go for yet until we get another director of football in and they're now sort of going on the backlog of uh, Brands recommendations but I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with Van der Beek. You guys let me know down below what you think of Van der Beek. Uh, Van der Beek, sorry. If you watched him in Holland, let me know your thoughts on him there. If you've watched a couple of very minimal of his Premier League experiences, let me know. His Premier League ones are so tough because I constantly watched him thinking, poor lad. Um, that Champions League push that Ajax tried to do in the Champions League under hit when him, De Jong, De Litt were in the team was very good. He impressed me then. Um, I think there's definitely a role for him at Everton. We need more midfielders uh, that are a little bit more creative uh, and not so much defensive. I don't know if this means a couple of them are going to leave. Obviously, that means we've now got Shabamin, Fabian Delph, whose contract's up at the end of the season, uh, Onyango, who's uh, I mean a youth team prospect, um, Andre Gomez. Allen, Decore, um, I think that's all the midfielders we have. We have about six mid, seven midfielders. Now that we're going to play a three, I guess we need more numbers there. Um, I, I think the club, ideally in an ideal world, would like to get a couple of them midfielders out. Fabian Delph, realistically, guys, will end his contract at the club. Um, I think the club would like to sell people, but in an ideal world, you need a buyer for the stuff you're selling. And if nobody's going to buy, you're going to struggle to sell. Uh, but that is all my thoughts on Donny van der Beek. Uh, sorry, I can't be as in-depth as some other players, but his Premier League experience is a bit narrow. And I'm going back to about two years ago now on his uh, Eredivisie career, which again is a little bit tough to judge him on because that was like nearly two years ago now. Let me know your thoughts though down below on Donny van der Beek. Do you like him? Do you like the versatility in him? He can play DM, CM and a uh, attacking midfielder in the number 10 role. That's brilliant to see. So let me know, are you excited to see Van der Beek at Everton? Don't forget to like the video, subscribe and comment down below all your thoughts on this transfer. And hopefully I'll be back with many more transfer signings today. It's deadline day. Everton have done a classic Everton and it looks like it's going to be a jam-packed deadline day. Stay safe.